I learned a valuable lesson, a $22,000 lesson, that options are very efficiently priced and are designed to make money for the sellers, not the buyers. <laughs> Warren Buffett says derivatives are WMD, financial weapons of mass destruction. I think he forgot the puts, which are a lot like a shiv, or brass knuckles, or a big club that will just knock the hell out of you. A put is an option, a contract, to sell a stock at a certain price for a certain amount of time, to put it back. You can make a lot of money fast, because each put contract controls 100 shares, which would cost much, much more if you wanted to buy them. But options are risky. You have to be a sophisticated investor to trade them. In fact, there's a test you have to pass. Options are also complicated. Unlike stocks, where there's just one for every company, there are thousands of options. The options on options are endless. There's in the money, near the money, out of the money, long dated, short dated. And of course, I knew all this before I started trading puts. Just so I thought Tesla was overvalued and had to fall in value. And I really had two ways of making money on that. I could short the stock or I could buy a put. Shorting the stock would have meant putting a lot of money at risk and would have put at risk the possibility, if I was wrong, of losing an infinite amount of money. Because when you short, you borrow a stock, sell it, take that money, and then at some point in the future, you have to deliver the stock. And if the stock has gone way up in value, you could lose a tremendous amount of money. So I didn't want to do that because the stock was very volatile. So I decided to buy a put. The puts were less risky than shorting because I knew with puts, I could only lose the value of the money I had invested in the puts. And thank goodness I did that because as we all know, Tesla stock is up 15X since I did this in the summer of 2018. The valuation was just insane. Here was a little tiny company making very few cars, not profitably. Elon Musk was, I think, a bit erratic and it had a valuation of over $50 billion. General Motors and Ford were worth 30, 20 billion. Honda, Toyota, all these companies were worth less than Tesla and they were very capable of making electric cars. It was just a matter of time before they entered the market and the price of electric cars would go down and the price of Tesla stock would collapse. You know, when I was talking to Tesla investors, they would say things about SpaceX or about the Boring Company, which are not part of Tesla. The other thing that happened to me, which really turned me off of Tesla, is that I had put a deposit on a Model 3 and when I saw the Roadster, I was excited about it and wanted one and put a deposit on that car too. But I changed my mind and I asked for my money back and it was almost impossible to get the money back. I was used to companies like Amazon and Apple where your money comes back like that. This wasn't happening and I thought, wow, they're in financial trouble. Why are they holding on to my money this way? And two, how can they treat customers so badly? This to me looked like what's called MNPI, that's material non-public information. That's the kind of information that can make you a lot of money in the stock market if it's right and you have it legally. So with all that, I thought, puts seem like a sure thing here. The company's way overvalued. They're hanging on to my money. Maybe they have some financial pressure. And Elon was also talking about all the problems with the Model 3. He said, building these cars was production hell. He had planned to build an alien dreadnought factory, which was gonna be fully automated. It wasn't working. And then he went on to, I think, call the man who rescued the poor little boys from the cave in Thailand, a pedophile, a pedo guy. And then he also said, am thinking of taking Tesla private or am considering taking Tesla private at 420. 420, oh my God, he's so funny. Funding secured. That looked to me like securities fraud. I actually worked in investor relations and the kind of things he was doing with Twitter um, now called X, I guess, were really obviously illegal. Now, one of the lessons I should have learned is that Elon Musk doesn't really play by the same rules regular people do. He can't really be sued successfully. You know, the poor man who he said was a pedo was unable to sue him successfully for any damages. The SEC hasn't been able to punish him for obviously manipulating his stock with these tweets about taking the company private and so forth. All that sort of, I brushed that off. I didn't really listen to that or, or, or take it seriously. And the other things I didn't really appreciate or accept where people love Teslas, were completely enthralled by him and by the idea of rockets that landed and all the things he was doing. I thought, you know, this is going to be easy. The stock has to fall. And I didn't realize really that the price of options is very carefully set by the sellers to ensure that they make money, not me. And as a buyer of a security, you know, I'm making a bet that I know something they don't. And, you know, maybe my 
bad customer experience counted for something, but in the end, obviously it didn't. On August 18th, I bought puts, $310 puts, giving me the right to sell at $310, and $250 puts with the right to sell at $250. Tesla stock was at $330 at the time. About a month later, Tesla stock fell to about $300, and my $310 puts were in the money. They were worth about 15, 20% more, and the $250 puts were also worth more, and I sold, and I made 15%. I thought this was easy. I was thrilled. The worst thing that can happen to somebody is to get lucky early at the track or on Wall Street. They think they're smart. They were actually just lucky. I have to admit that, but at the time, I didn't get it. So 10 days later, I thought, you know, mm, puts good, more puts better. Yes, and I bought more puts. I bought more six month puts. And at the same time, finally, Elon got his factory unstuck and the Model 3 started appearing on the street. And the more people saw this car, the more they liked it and the more they bought Tesla stock. And Tesla stock pretty much since that point has gone straight up. And it went up to 15X where I shorted it. And with the stock going up and the duration, the life of my puts shrinking, their value declined very rapidly and steadily. It was very depressing. I held till the end. They expired worthless. I lost my full investment in the second set of puts, which was $30,000, but I made $8,000 on the first set. So in total, I lost about $22,000 investing in Tesla put. And yes, there were some lessons. I mean, obviously the lessons are if people love the thing that you're trying to short or, or put against, you may be making a mistake. If you're a newbie trading complicated financial instruments, you may be about to lose money. And I have learned that lesson. I have left puts alone. I've left options alone since then. And I've learned that, you know, market efficiency is very real. I mean, it's very hard to make a lot of money fast without taking a lot of risk. When you take a lot of risk, sometimes you will lose money, which I did. I'm just grateful that I didn't short Tesla because then I could have been bankrupted. It was such an incredible performer and I never would have expected it. That was my worst trade. I'm going to make a series of videos about the worst trades of great investors, certainly not including me, but there's real stinkers from Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Bill Ackman, Carl Icahn. These guys have all taken a lot of risk and they've made many great decisions, but they've also made some clunkers, which in hindsight don't look so good. And we'll be going over those in detail. Thanks for watching and bye. You got a hot tip?